Hi, I'm Paul. And I'm Ming. And welcome to Skip the Rulebook, your guide through a forest of the rulebook, helping you discover your new game. Today we're taking a trek through the rainforest in Costa Rica. In this game you take the role of an explorer taking the first tentative steps onto a new land in search of the exotic species found within. You need to brave the dangers of the untamed jungle and race against your fellow explorers if you're to return home with the greatest discoveries. So you could say you've got to catch them all. Let's skip the rulebook. I'm going to need this. The majority of the contents of the box, and in fact the mainstay of the game, is made up of these cardboard hexes. These are used to construct the jungle as you explore, and represent the range of terrain that you'll be uncovering in search of new species. Each of them also carries an animal graphic on the back to indicate what can be found in that area. The next thing you'll find are the wooden explorer tokens. Each player will be given a set of these to keep track of the location of their bands of adventurers as they traverse the island. There's also a black token which indicates the identity of the expedition leader in each turn. Lastly we have the player reference cards. These are used to help you keep track of your score as well as the rarity of the different animals that you've bagged. Begin by shuffling together the hex tiles. This is most easily done by placing them all face down in the box and giving them a stir. Once they're sufficiently mixed, we need to build the board, which will represent an unexplored portion of the rainforest in Costa Rica. To build the board, draw a sufficient number of tiles to build a hexagonal play area with five tiles along each side of the shape. When placing the tiles, remember to place the animal graphics face down so that players cannot see them. Any extra hex pieces should be placed back in the box. They won't be used during this game. Once the board is built, we now must deploy our expeditions. Each player should choose a colour and then take the six explorer tokens matching that colour. They should then place one explorer on each corner of our board like so. Each of these groups of explorers is referred to as an expedition. Each player should then take the reference card that matches the colour of their explorers. Finally, we elect our first expedition leader. This should be the last player who visited a rainforest. Alternatively, this can be issued randomly. The first expedition leader should be passed the leader token. We're now ready to begin our trek. The aim of Costa Rica is to locate and collect animals by moving your explorers around the board. You gain points for both the number and the variety of animals you can bring back from our new land, as indicated on the reference card. Each round, the expedition leader begins by choosing one of the expeditions that contains an explorer of their own colour, so I'm going to start by choosing this one. The leader then elects which hex the expedition will move on to. At the start of the game, each expedition is only next to one hex, so I'm going to choose this one. Once you've chosen a tile, flip it over. It will show a graphic of either one or two animals. The expedition leader then gets to choose whether they want to keep this tile or to pass. If you choose to keep the tile, as I will now, take it from the board along with your explorer and place it in front of you. All of your claimed tiles should be placed with the animal side face up for all players to see. Next, you should move any explorers remaining in that expedition onto the empty space. Since I have claimed a tile, the round is now over. The expedition leader token moves to the next player sat clockwise, and we begin a new round. For my turn, I'm going to choose this group over here. I again select an adjacent tile and flip it. Instead of claiming this tile, I'm going to choose to pass. This means that the next player in the expedition, in this case Ming, will get a chance to claim it. I will pass as well. If all players in the expedition pass, then we move the expedition onto the last revealed tile. The round then continues with the expedition leader selecting another tile adjacent to the same expedition and flip it. 
If I was to choose to claim these tiles now, I'd get to claim all revealed tiles rather than just the one. If I choose to pass again, the Ming will get the opportunity to claim those tiles. If we both pass, then we could push on for a third tile, and so on. The tactics of the game should be fairly obvious now in that you've got a Russian roulette occurring. Do you choose to pass and push on for more animals? And if you do, will the other players claim them out from under you? I think I'm going to claim these tiles. I take both of the tiles and my explorer and move the remaining expedition onto the last revealed space. For my next turn, I'm going to carry on the expedition that Paul just abandoned. The danger with bottling out of an expedition early is that the remaining players can carry on that expedition without you. This means you have no chance to claim the pot of animals from that trek. You can only participate in an expedition in which you have an explorer. I will start by moving here. If I choose to pass, as I will now, since there are no remaining players in that expedition to claim the tiles, I can just keep going, potentially bagging myself loads of animals. There is one thing that can stop a runaway expedition, that adds an extra element of risk versus reward. The last tile I flipped over has the threat symbol on it. This represents some danger that my group faces that could end in failure through some sickness or injury. If you turn over one threat, you're okay. If however you turn over a second, you've come to some harm and the expedition is over. You must discard the two tiles that have the threat symbols on them. The expedition leader can then claim the remaining tiles before removing their explorer token from the board. As before, we'd move any remaining explorers in that expedition to the space left by the last revealed tile. The game continues until all explorers have been removed from the board, or there are no tiles left. At this point, we must now calculate our score. Firstly, count up the number of animals you've claimed during the game, and compare them to the scoring track on your reference card. There are six different types of animals in the game, and you'll gain additional points based on the number of each you've claimed. If you've managed to claim one of each of those six animals, then you get 20 points. For each additional set of the six different animals that you've claimed, you gain an additional 20 points. The winner is the player with the most points. In case of a tie, the player who's got the most animals of a single type is the winner. It is possible through accident or design that an expedition may become cut off, meaning there are no tiles adjacent to it. This could happen if another expedition moved through and claimed the tiles next to it. If at any point during the game an expedition has no adjacent tiles, this expedition cannot explore anymore and must be removed from the game. While the game is designed for 2-5 to five players, you may find that a 2 player game is over pretty quickly. It is suggested that if you would like a longer, more strategic game with 2 players, that each player takes 2 of the sets of coloured explorers. At the end of the game, the animals claimed by each colour are then scored separately, and finally added together to make your final score. That's it from us at Skip the Rulebook. If you found this video useful, please hit like. If you want to hear more from Skip the Rulebook, hit subscribe. You can also find out more about us on Facebook, Twitter, and skiptherulebook.com. Keep your eyes out for our Just Play video to watch us play Costa Rica from start to finish with our friends. Join us next time for your chance to jump into that new board game without having to do any tedious rule reading. See you later.